Yeah, I'm here with Steve Cannon, uh, U.S. CEO of Mercedes. A pleasure to be with you here at this show. Uh, hey, let me ask you, uh, first of all, about the New York Auto Show. I mean, uh, obviously, it's a global brand, but how important is New York to you as, as a market? New York is, well, it's, it's one of our top markets. I mean, New York and, and L.A. go back and forth each year and vie for the number one market for Mercedes-Benz, and we've got tremendous market share. So uh, the New York Auto Show is becoming more and more important. In fact, you know, between Detroit and New York, it, this is arguably one of, if not the most important show. That's why we're, we've got three world premieres here uh, at the New York Auto Show, which is great. And what, tell us about the world premieres. So our all-new redesigned GL, that's our seven-passenger, sort of our, 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 our big, big SUV. Carrier, yeah. That's right. Uh, we're launching that in August of this year, so it's debuting today. Uh, we've got uh, the SL65 AMG, so a fire-breathing. That's fire the one that might like. Yeah, if you, if you like 600 horsepower and nothing but pure torque and the ability to go from zero to 60 in about 3.6 seconds, then I think you probably would yes. like that. Yes, um, that's a yes. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal Halo product for us. So, uh, so we've got that, and we've got the uh, completely redesigned uh, GLK. That's our entry sport utility uh, yeah. that we're also launching this year in the summer. So your stand happens to be right next to BMW. For 11 years, another car uh, brand ruled as America's number one seller in luxury. Now you and BMW, it's literally like a horse race. I think you guys were ahead in February by 770 cars. They edged ahead now by 36 units. How do you see this competition uh, progressing? It's going to be just like that, back and forth. I mean, they're they're a great company. They've got a great brand, and they do really well in the United States, and so do we. Um, so back and forth. They've got some advantages. We've got some advantages. Uh, overall, I think we've got a more powerful brand. Uh, we've got a lot coming in the next few years. In fact, uh, just in the next four years, uh, Mercedes-Benz is going to be rolling out in the United States eight cars in segments that we don't even compete in today. So we've got a lot of energy in our product pipeline. Uh, so there's a ton of momentum for our brand. We will always be uh, crosstown rivals with our with our friends from Munich. Uh, but it's but it's a good uh, it's a good battle and it's it's one that uh, everybody in America likes the back and forth between two folks that are going at each other. Now you both have the uh, I guess relative disadvantage right now of being headquartered in Europe. Uh, Euro seems relatively strong, at least to me. I remember buying a car in Germany when it was 86 cents. Um, but how important is that to you now? Because I know a lot of manufacturing you do is obviously all over the world and even here in the U.S. So we spread our global currency risk by, by producing all around the world, and that's why we're in Alabama. In fact, we're doubling our plant down there. Uh, we, we produce the, the GLK, we produce the GL, we produce the M-Class and the R-Class there. Uh, we're in the process of doubling that, and starting in 2014, the next generation C-Class will be produced in Alabama as well. So by doubling uh, our U.S. dollar uh, production world, uh, we level out currency fluctuation. So you're always going to be exposed to that. And right now, the, the euro is back down a little bit. And that's working right now a little bit in our favor here in the United States. Uh, but overall, we're balancing that. What are production costs like here? I mean, German unions are relatively uh, strong. But of course, they work very closely together with the companies. Whereas here in America, it's historically been kind of a headbutting sort of for sort of a deal union versus management right well our plant down in Alabama is, is not union uh, they haven't seen the need to organize they get uh, they get well taken care of their voice is, is very well heard uh, down with MBUSI that's a sister company for uh, for MBUSA uh, so that just hasn't happened for us so but the costs are the, is it is are the margins better than producing here um, in Germany? No, and the, in producing here in than, than in Germany. Generally, they're, they're similar. I mean, we're, we're, those are two high efficiency markets. We're really efficient. Germany has managed through all these years to offset their higher production costs through greater efficiency, and that's why uh, we're still as competitive as we are. Uh, but we just cut the the ribbon just this past month on a brand new factory in Hungary that's going to be producing a new generation of cars. Some of them are going to find their way uh, to the United States. So it's about this global production capability. Let me ask you quickly about uh, the economy here. It's chugging along, but not at a fast pace. Luxury sales, a, a different story, right? I mean, you guys see those continuing in a strong way. We saw a nice uptick st starting in the fourth quarter of last year. And if you look at our sales between the fourth quarter and the first quarter, we're up 24%. So suddenly 
we're actually seeing real momentum that we're carrying from one month into the next. Uh, we're, we're pretty optimistic. The industry, the SAR, is, is at about 14.4. We started the year thinking it was going to be around 13.8, so it's exceeded our expectations already, and we already see the forecasters starting to dial that up a little bit more. All right. Hey, Steve, it's been a pleasure. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Steve Cannon, U.S. CEO for Mercedes.